welcome back to the lecture series in cell culture technology. So, today we are in the fifth lecture of the first week, I just put that down otherwise I will miss it out. So, week 1, lecture 5, W 1 slash L 5. Okay. So, we closed on in the previous lecture, in the fourth lecture on cell cycle, where at the fag end of the lecture I introduce the two cell types broadly speaking, the dividing and the non-dividing cell. And in the non-dividing cell, I give the example of a neuronal cell, cardiac cell and in the dividing type, I talked about the skin cells. I am just taking example, there are so many of these. Okay. So, whenever you talk about dividing cell, think of it, say if I take the, so let us uh, start it. So, I am talking about the cells. non-dividing on this side and dividing on the other side. So, my example was skin. Now, if you look at the skin itself, skin consists of two layers, epidermal layer and the dermal layer. So, if you look at your own skin, it will be something like this. Okay. This is the skin, the hairs are coming out like this and this hair cell bodies are kind of sitting like this. Like this and underneath it, you will see a first layer like this, second layer like this, I am just broadening it up, but it is not that thick of a layer, third layer like this, fourth layer like this and a fifth layer which is something like this. Okay. So, I am just kind of you know, so this is the epidermis and within epidermis the layers are, this is stratum germinativum, stratum this one is stratum granulosum, in between is stratum spinosum, stratum lucidum and stratum corneum. Now, the interesting part is this layer, this layer contains some apart from other cells like Merkel cells and uh, melanocytes, this layer contains something called basal cells. These cells, you can consider them as the stem cells or the germ cells for, not the germ cells is the wrong word, sorry, uh, let me take it back, the skin stem cells which divide to form the skin layer. So, whatever divides here, they move like this. layer by layer they move and then they come to the uppermost layer. And this whole process, this migration of the cell takes around uh, 15 to 20 days and at the top layer these cells survive for 2 to 3 weeks before they are sloughed off and the previous layer moves to the upper layer. So, it is always like if the lowermost layer is 5, next is 4, then 3, 2, 1. So, from 5 something jump to, jumps to 4, from 4 that one jumps to 
3, from 3 to 2, 2 to 1 and then from 1 to 0 it get you know sloughed off from the skin. Similarly, this whole process continues. Now, having said this, now start let us talk about this cell cycle process. So, this individual cell has can go through something called a process of mitosis. Okay? M phase, what we call as the mitosis is the M phase. After the mitosis, where the chromosome separates out and the two daughter cells are formed. So, this is the cell now and here is the nucleus, it is chromatid condenses and the two daughter cells are formed. Okay. Now, at this stage, next stage post mitosis, this cell has a choice, this is called the gap phase, G 1 phase. It has a choice and it has a decision to make whether it is going to terminally go out of dividing and it becomes a non dividing okay, or non dividing or it temporarily goes out of division and then in due course, it again comes back to the division cycle. So, there are several checkpoints here, so, the several cyclin and CDK kinases which are involved, I am not getting in, into those. Okay. So, there are several such uh, molecules which are dealing with it, cyclines and CDK kinases and there are several, several checkpoints which ensures whether they are going to go further or not. Okay. Then comes a phase called S phase. If they decide to you know go further and this is the S phase where DNA synthesis happens okay. and followed by a G 2 phase where they again have a choice again have a choice and there are a lot of checkpoints out here. So, a cell essentially goes through this cycle. Now, that brings us to a very interesting question that how many times a dividing cell will be going through this cycle? Is this number finite or is this number infinite. Say for example, a particular cell like this, how many cycle? 1, 2, 3, 4, likewise so on and so forth. How many cycle it can do? Because with every cycle, there is something in its chromosome called telomere. The telomere length reduces and as a matter of fact, the length of the telomere can tell you, which is part of the chromosome, can tell you that what is the age of it. Because as more and more telomere lengths are lost, eventually the cell loses its viability, loses its original characteristics. Okay. So, if a cell at this stage, say for example, at G 1 phase out here, decides to finally land up that it will become a non dividing, it will permanently go to the non dividing phase. Then it has to decide what final function it will attain, what does that mean. So, there are two, three phases apart from the cycle it goes through broadly speaking. A cell of course, it goes through a cell cycle now while it is cell cycle it is doing there's two options at some point or other it has it has been dividing maybe for few days or few hours whatever it has must have dividing and after dividing if it decides at a certain point of its division that it is not going to go any further division then it has to take its 
final identity. What I meant by its final identity means whether it will be a cell which will be producing a particular kind of hormone or it will be a cell which will be producing a particular kind of an enzyme or it will be a cell which will be present in the alveoli or it will be a cell present uh, in the heart as cardiomyocytes or it will be a cell producing insulin or it will be a cell producing uh, some other uh, hormones like you know gonadotrophins. So, that paid determination of a cell post its division is called differentiation. differentiation. So, uh, this is a mass of cell sitting out here, which is dividing. Now, it divide from a bigger mass this ok. Now, from this mass, some of the cells decided that you know they will decide their own fate. So, some of them say becomes like a fully differentiated cell, they will not divide any further, they may secrete something, some from a specific population may decide that they become neuron and they would not you know divide any further, whereas some from a population, a specific population decided that they will become muscle cells or some other cell type. So, this fate determination process fate determination is called differentiation and the conditions for dividing cell is different from a differentiation. So, since that brings us to a point while we are culturing cells in a dish, we have to make a call are we holding the cell type on a dividing phase or they will be differentiated. So, say for example, I have a culture dish here where I have these cells which are sitting and suppose they are dividing and spreading further. Now, at this the conditions which will be there, the dividing conditions, the growth factors and the surrounding milieu will be entirely different for these cells when they decide their fate determination whether they will become from here they will become a neuron or they become you know some glial cell something like this astrocytes or they will become Schwann cells or they become cardiomyocytes that is it. So, the conditions out here if you talk about the growth factors here they are totally different. These two conditions are very, very unequal. So, that brings us to another point that whenever we try to emulate a biological system outside, we have to emulate a dynamic system and that was the reason why in the previous class before I teach this aspect or highlight this aspect to you, 
I talked about the concept of introducing microfluidic systems, where you can change the milieu at a very nanomolar, picomolar concentration by you know flowing certain specific growth factor at a certain point of time and then secrete it, then sending another set of growth factors which you know will may promote differentiation or some other aspect. In that whole process, there is another word which will be coming very handy and that I am just putting in red now. There is a word called between division and differentiation, there is another word called D differentiation. What is D differentiation? D differentiation is a situation when a cell forgets or loses its ability of its differentiated behavior. What does that mean? Say for example, this becomes a neuron. Now, this loses its characteristics of say firing action potentials or producing certain kind of neurotransmitters. It loses its ability. It means this cell has reached a de-differentiation. It has forgotten or it has lost permanently. Well, this part will kind of keep, will take it with a pinch of salt, because we do not know. The future of cell biology may tell a totally different story that we can again get back a de-differentiated cell back into all its differentiated status. So, I will be, I'll be a little cautious on it. So, but for the time being, a de-differentiated cell loses its that unique capability of its differentiated state. And there is another one, another word which comes pretty handy here called de-adaptation. Say for example, a cell is adapted to produce say a particular hormone. Now, this particular hormone production for some reason or other, it is adapted in that particular milieu. You keep this cell out in this milieu, it will behave differently. Say for example, uh, let me pick up that previous class example, uh, previous year. Say for example, here you have a milieu. Okay? Now, if you keep this red, I consider each house as a cell in this milieu it will do certain x, y, z stuff. Say for example, it produces compound A, but if you remove it and keep grow it in isolation, it may not be able to produce that compound A, because in order for this red one to produce compound A may need influence from this uh, pink one, from this green ones or from this uh, blue one. And if these influences are missing, then what will happen is this cell will be de-adapted to that situation. So, this process is called de-adaptation. So, these words are very, very important that we understand that is it a de-differentiated cell? We will come later when all these things will be dealing more and more or is it de-adapted? Could this de-adaptation be rectified? Could we rectify the de-adaptation? Similarly, those who are using cell lines, so I am just using a word which I have not introduced. So, cell lines are cells which are continuously dividing and people isolate such colonies of cell and store it in liquid nitrogen and take them out and again culture them, again subculture them. We will come to these words, do not worry about it, what is culturing, what is subculturing and all those things. But just for the time being, think of it, ki I have a mass of cell, unique mass of cell and I can grow them, 
I can divide them, I can take a part of it like this and I can store it and I grow these ones and do my experiment. I pulled out this part and take again grow them, again store a part of it. Likewise, every time whenever I am dividing them, I am taking a part and store it in liquid nitrogen. Then after that again I am using it and I can make it in number of aliquots of it and I take an aliquot, I grow it and I again take a small part of it. So, this process is called subculturing. You are continuously growing them, but I told you something and one such cell line which is very commonly used called HeLa cell. Again, we will after the name of Henrietta Lack, we will come to this story of this HeLa cell, but here what I wish to highlight is something much more uh, I should say interesting and precautionary. Every time a cell is going through this cycle, it loses I told you part of its telomere because the telomere is activity changes. So, now there are several labs in the world who use HeLa cells. Somewhere in 1950s, this whole cell line has developed. We have no clue that how many cycles these cells have gone through and still we are using it. And there are several reports, I will dug out, I will try to dug out those reports, some of them for you to read. Those cells behave now very bizarre, several places this is happening cell lines over period of time, growing them in unsynthetic artificial conditions time and again, time and again, time and again, time and again, gives us results which are fairly bizarre. And why is it so? I told you that every cell is this division process, what I tried to tell you, is this division process what I am telling, is it never ending? You can divide it forever? Possibly no it has a threshold limit and many a times we do push it beyond that limit. So, whenever you are subculturing or you know there is a process, this pa uh, process called passaging the cells over generations after generations, one has to keep track that how many times this is divided at least because of course, you do not even know that when you receive the stock, how many times it has already divided before this but at least you can keep a tab of it and what you one can do is something called a karyotyping process where you can analyze the chromosomes. Time to time if you are a person who are using those kind of you know cells, cell lines, you should karyotype it and see how close or it is resembling to the original stock or the description of the original stock some 40, 50 years back, how close you are to that or has it reached to a point that you know it has to be you know thrown away, it is no more really worth using. So, one has to always go through that exercise time and again, time and again to figure out that hope I am not using something which is which will give me ambiguous results. And in order to appreciate that one has to understand this basic fundamental that this process is a chemical process. It goes through that cycle and it has its checkpoint, check and balance in the form of cyclins and CDK kinases which are playing tremendous role. What am I interpreting? What is the question I am having? Does this question matters about its genetic integrity of that cell? Maybe it does not matter, maybe you are using it as a sensor, it does not matter as long as that sensing protein is being synthesized by it, it is perfectly fine, but maybe it matters, you are doing some other kind of experiments with it. So, these are the basic questions as a cell culturist one has to ask, without asking these questions I mean it will be a blind walk in an alley, you will get some results and you will of course write a paper also. But are you sure what you are talking or what you are documenting? So, that is why understanding of these fundamental concept is very, very important. We will come back. So, do not worry for those who are unable to track what is this cell line concept I am introducing, we will come back to this. But for the time being understand that the cell either will divide and 
or some after division they will reach a point where they won't divide any further they will be differentiated yet there will be certain cells who will lose their permanently as of now what we know from the literature their differentiation ability and they are called de-differentiated cells and yet there are certain cells which does not lose it permanently their differentiated potential they are de-adaptive cells. So, there will be several such things which will happen and then there are terms called transformations and all which will come which will be coming later once we will talk about the cell line cultures. Okay. So, as of now what all things we have talked about is the oxygen and carbon dioxide milieu, we have talked about the extracellular matrix, we have talked about the dynamic nature of in vivo system and how we can emulate that in vivo system using the modern technologies of microfluidic systems and we will be talking later about all those in depth detail and the most recent studies in that area till 2017. 20, 20, 20, 20, and uh, now we are talking about the cell cycle very briefly to give you an feel about the challenges what you will be coming across while we will be talking about the cell lines and primary culture. Again this is another new term we will come back later into it. So, I will close in here in the next class we will talk a little bit more about uh, the biology of the, of the cultured cell before we move on to the other aspect of cell culture technology. Thanks for your patience listening.